My name is Taven. Um, I'm a pup. Hi. Today I want to uh, do some math with Taven. I want to talk in this video about um, maximums and minimums. Now this is a subject that I know a lot of people in first term calculus sometimes have trouble with, so I thought I'd just go through some of the ideas. And then in um, a follow-up video after this, um, I want to talk about optimization and do an example or two. And that's just optimization is just an application of the maximum and minimum ideas that I'm going to talk about now. Um, first, I want to say um, a really good free online grapher, graphing utility, is desmos.com. Um, put this here. It's a really good free, it's colors and all that good stuff. And if you were to go there and just, just take this function, it's the one I want to um, work with today. Um, take this function, and if you were to graph it, just to get a visualization of what we're looking at, you don't have to graph these things in general to, to do these, um, you will get something that looks like this. Let's see, it's through four, it comes up and down and up. And this spot is actually negative three. This max, if you were to graph this, you would actually see that this is actually negative three. And this, this point here is two. Okay, so again, this is just a, to help you visualize what I'm gonna be talking about right now so we can develop the ideas and the theory. So if we wanna talk about, so first I wanna talk about increasing and decreasing. If you look at this graph, you're, you're increasing increasing up to negative three, and also over here after two. And then between the two, you're decreasing. Now, if you didn't have a graph, how could you possibly tell where you're increasing or decreasing? Well, if you remember that the derivative, so I'm going to assume that you know some basics about derivatives. Um, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. That's a P. For pup. So here, if you look at all the tangent lines, right, all the tangent lines have positive slope. So when you're increasing your derivatives will always be positive. And the same and then also over here. F prime is positive positive. And then in the same way, wherever you're decreasing, your derivatives are negative. Your slopes are negative. Negative slopes. So mathematically, if you did not have a graph, you could just take the derivative of your function, which is, and again, I'm assuming you know the basics of derivatives. Uh, this would be 6x squared uh, plus 6x um, minus 36. And you want to know where this is positive or negative. Well, you can do little intervals. Um, there are several ways to go about this. I like thinking of this as... Um, you're going to change from um, positive to negative where the derivative is zero. So where's the derivative of zero? Well, you set this equal to zero. You can divide by six squared plus six, x minus six equals zero. Then you can use a quadratic formula or whatever you want to do. I'm just going to factor. So this is x. And you've got an x. Um, what do you need? You need a negative 2 and a positive 3. Let me check to make sure that's right. x squared. But, yep. And so that means that x is 2 or negative 3. And, and look, that's where it is. So, um, all you have to do then is test. Let's see, I need more space to write. 2 and negative 3.
So here's negative infinity up to negative 3 is one interval that you're either increasing or decreasing. And then negative 3 up to 2, negative 3 up to 2, you're either increasing or decreasing. And then 2 and after. So you've got test intervals. And then um, we see that what we should get is um, increasing on this interval. Well, let's test it. You can just plug in a point. Say, oh, negative 4. Why not? And I'm plugging the point into the derivative, not the original function. A lot of people make this mistake. Um, you want to plug it into the derivative because that tells you what your slopes are doing, not the original function. If I put the negative 4 into the derivative, which I erased, <laughs> actually this was the derivative, let me write that here again, f prime of x. Um, negative 4 minus 2 is negative um, 6 times negative 4 plus 3. Um, you've got a negative times a negative is a positive. Positive. In the same way, you can pick a number. How about zero? Because that's a nice number. You can pick any number you want that's in between. And you get a negative number. Negative two times positive three is negative six. And indeed, you're decreasing. In the same way, you can put in any number you want, say, 1,001, whatever you want, <laughs> um, and you'll get, that's positive. So if you did not have the graph, you can tell where you're increasing and decreasing. Now from there, there's kind of a natural thing to notice. Um, if you're increasing and then you're decreasing, you have to have a maximum at that point. Maximum. Because you're increasing and then decreasing. Increasing, then decreasing. And in the same way, if you're decreasing, then increasing, you have a minimum. This is what's known as the first derivative test. If you change signs, from positives, if your derivatives change signs from positive to negative at a point, then you have a maximum. If it, you change signs from negative to positive, then you have a minimum. So let me write that down. This is the first derivative test. First derivative. Sorry for my pausey writing. I'm not good with writing. Derivative test says that if your derivatives, I'm going to say it like this, if your derivatives are positive just before, before, for this point, this x value, c value, whatever you want to call it, just before c and um, then afterwards, your slopes are negative, just after that point, then that x value of c, so you're increasing and then decreasing, is a the word is local, but I won't we'll talk about that now, but <laughs> is a maximum. And then likewise, if you change from negative to positive, then you have a minimum. If you're decreasing before C and and increasing 
after C, then you have minimum. So that looks like you're decreasing and then increasing. Then x equals c is a local minimum. And that's the first derivative test. And you don't have to remember these words or anything. I really recommend you do not memorize the words. Think about the pictures. What makes sense? I started with a nice example, but it really just makes, makes sense. Um, now, there's another thing called the second derivative test, which also um, tells you where you have minimums and maximums, but in that case, it uses the second derivative. Um, I think uh, if you want me to make an another video about the second derivative test sometime, um, just let me know in the comments below or, or something, and then sometime I can do that. But I wanted to just focus on the ideas of minimums and maximums and why it makes sense and how to um, determine them. Um, so it's a little, one more thing I want to say about this, a little detail, but it's a very important detail. I didn't want to start out talking about it. I wanted to give you the ideas. This point C, um, where you're changing, it's called a critical point. Um, um, so I'm going to put this, you need you have to make sure that at this point, your derivative is zero, slope zero. And if you look in books, and there, there are other kind of details and, and things that they talk about, but I just wanted to go over the main ideas. So then, as I said, my next video I'm going to do that you can see is uh, I'm going to do an application of this um, called, in something called optimization. So we'll see you then next time on Math with Payment. Bark, bark.